Hi, <clears throat> we will look a bit on how to use uh, floor planning for uh, programming and managing uh, Spartan 3 FPGA. Normally you would be using uh, Silent Ice project um, to manage your entire Silent project for your FPGA and then maybe take in floor planning as a separate tool for distributing the logic inside the, the FPGA. But Actually, floor planning can be used as the as the home of the project, so to speak. And we will look at how to do this. Um, the reason why I want to show this is that if if you are used to use floor planning with older FPGAs such as the Spartan 3 series or Spartan 6 series, the um, change onto the newer Vivado uh, platform won't be too big. So. First of all, we are going here for to start up our uh, software. So, Silence Design Tools, um, Ice Design Suite 14.7, the last version that they put out. And instead of going for the Ice Design Tools, you're going for the Planner Head and selecting uh, Planner Head. So, when Planner Head starts up, it looks like this, or probably like this. Um, you have some options here. You can create a new project. You can open a project that you already have created. Uh, get a list of recent projects you have opened. You have a bunch of examples that you can open and and, and learn how to use. And there's of, of course, there's some documentations over here as well. Um, what we will do today is just start creating a completely blank project just to show what the steps are. So we are going here create a new project. And there will be a guide popping up that will show you how to get through this. So um, well it puts in the location path that I used the last. So here I will just write a project name. project test um, and say that it create project subdirectory so that the project the path for the project will be with the project name as the home for the entire project so we say next and you have some options here um, if you're going for an entire project you would normally do a RTL project okay, so we we will go next of course if you have some um, if you have some old projects that they've been doing in ICE, you can import them here uh, and, and make them plan ahead projects. But in this case, we'll just create a blank project. So we we'll press next. Um, for sources, you can uh, select either to add um, current files, so current VHDL files, uh, add an entire directory. Uh, if you have a bunch of files or create a new file. So we we'll go with the create new file. Here you have to specify that you want to do a VHDL file, not very lock. Uh, and uh, we will create the top file of our project. And the file location will be a local to project. So that will be in the main project folder that we created in the first step. Say OK and it adds this one. Um, when naming, you don't have to put uh, the, the, the file uh, surname, but it will put it as automatically. So next, um, we don't, in this case at least, we don't have any existing IP packages or anything we want to add. So we could just go next here for the constraints. Um, if you're doing anything that needs to go onto a chip, that means if you're not only doing simulation, you would need to add a constraint file. Depending on the board that you're using, you either have a complete constraint file uh, with all the peripherals defined, or you're doing a custom-made board, you might not have a complete a constraint file you might have uh, to, to build it yourself. 
Uh, so in this case, we're just creating an empty constraint file. So we again go create file and um, give it a name uh, and again local to project um, and next. Then we need to change the, or select the architecture. Um, so we'll select general purpose in this case at least. Um, we will be working on a Spartan 3A or 3AN. Actually, it's a 3AN we are using. Um, selecting again here, subfamily. Uh, for the package of this FPGA we are using here is uh, TQD144 um, with a speed grade of minus 4. So we are up with this sub selection. So we press next. Um, and we are okay with this, so we say finish. So now we uh, get this uh, defined module uh, health scheme that needs to have our input on the I.O. ports that we want to have defined for our project. So at least we need to define at least one pin, but we'll just put in two. So that's a input pin. You can also define a bus if you like, and a, an output. Um, we could set that as a bus, saying that we want to have it to be of two bit uh, width, so it's from one down to zero. Okay, and we will say okay. So what we now have is we have our head uh, VHD file here and double clicking on it, it will open over here uh, and you can see we have our entry we have our port defined with input as a standard logic and our output as a standard logic vector uh, with down one down to zero and then down here you will be adding all of your logic um, the functionality of the design. Um, up here in the source view, you can unfold this and see that it has put in the header file, uh, the, or the constraint file, under constraints naturally. So if you double click that, it's also empty. So in here you would need to fill in your constraints uh, for your for your project. Often that would uh, limit you to constraining how the how the input pins in your description here, in your weird still description, how they connect to the external physical pins on the FPGA. Uh, and, and that is what you describe here in the constraint file. Um, I won't go into much more details of this, uh, continue on the videos and we'll get back to how to use this um, with a constraint file with some contents in and a, a head file with some logic defined that makes sense and we'll see how to work our way through compiling it creating a bit file and uh, and putting it on the chip but that's for the next video so thank you for now